Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the radio transmitter that I've used for my drone. So as you can see that I've used the FlySky FS-i6S radio transmitter for my drone. It, it, it's a 12 channel transmitter that comes with a 12 channel receiver as you can see and the receiver comes with the PPM encoder embedded in itself. So you don't need to use any external uh, you know, encoder uh, in order to connect uh, the receiver and the flight controller eventually it produces the number of wires because if you use an external encoder then it will require more number of wires you know to connect between the receiver and uh, the uh, flight controller so this one is uh, really very user friendly as it comes with the touch capacitive display again as compared to its uh, prior versions like the flysky fsx or the flysky f f, f uh, flysky uh, fsi6 uh, the basic version I should say this one is pretty much user friendly compact handy and very easy to control I should say it's not that much bulky it's not that much large in size so you can easily uh, take it in your hand and uh, control your uh, drone your RC car or any other unmanned aerial vehicles so it's a 12 channel radio transmitter as you can see the gimbal it comes with a self-centering throttle but if you want then you can remove the self-centering option by removing one of the springs inside the gimbal by opening the back shield of the radio transmitter you can see that there are a number of uh, switches over here these two are two-way switches as you can see and these two are three-way switches so switch a switch b switch c and switch d as you can see and uh, behind uh, over here there is a knob that you can use in order to uh, control your camera gimbal and at the bottom there are uh, two switches you can see the silver color buttons however i haven't explored the use of these switches and inside the box there is a stand mine mod comes with the stand where you can hold your uh, hold your uh, phone it also comes with an usb um, cable over here as you can see there is a port that you can use in order to uh, upload the uh, uh, firmware or update the firmware using the micro usb port and there is another uh, port that you can use in order to uh, uh, connect your flight controller with the uh, with the simulator and over here you can see that there is a kind of a hook or a ring that you can use in order to connect your uh, uh, connect your next strap uh, for the ease of control I should say the display is totally touch capacitive so it makes the device pretty much user friendly as compared to its predecessors and uh, one problem that I would like to uh, say that I would like to admit about the device is that it comes with uh, with the AA batteries I mean it is powered by four AA batteries for 1.5 volt batteries so there are two options that you can follow one is you can use rechargeable aa batteries and the other is that you can use non-rechargeable aa batteries but as it consumes a significant amount of power it is a way for better option to use the rechargeable batteries like i'm doing i'm using uh, four uh, rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries and in the previous videos i've already shown you on how you can charge your nickel metal hydride battery using the imax v6 ac charger currently i'm charging my lipo battery with the imax v6 ac charger so that's all currently my throttle is in the self-centering mode i feel more comfortable you know with the self-centering throttle to fly the vehicle in uh, to fly my drone in uh, different autonomous modes and uh, perform different experiments or attain uh, accomplish different projects i should say so there are two buttons in order to power on or power up the device the reason is in case it get gets pressed you know uh, accidentally then there is chance that the display may get the, the device may turn on this is the reason they've kept two switches uh, to turn on the device so you have to uh, click on these two switches uh, for turning on the device and at that time you should have to ensure that the throttles are in the upward position all these sorry the, all the sticks all the switches you have to ensure that all the uh, switches are in the upward position for, suppose one of the switches in the downward position so if you try to turn on then it will give you an alarm as you can see place all the switches in their up position so i'm pulling it up you can see that the device has turned on the radio transmitter has turned on so there are a number of settings that you have to go through after uh, powering up your device for the first time uh, but before that let me give a short intro about uh, about the interface so 
you can see the channels over here by default four channels are activated and the auxiliary channels can be activated manually uh, from the setup i'll show you shortly so you can see as i change the position as the position uh, of the throttles of the sticks of the gimbal sticks are deflected you can see their uh, uh, change uh, in uh, through these bars and you can easily uh, check uh, the channels which stick is assigned to which channel a uh, mixed channel 5 and 6 that's why you can see that it's uh, deflected from its main position because of mixed the channels i'll later tell you why I, I have mixed and what is the purpose of mixing and, and on how you can mix up the channels and as i've told you that it consumes a significant amount of power it's a better option in order to reduce the brightness and the intensity of the beep sound before that over here you can see the transmitter voltage and the receiver voltage i haven't connected my receiver yet so it doesn't show any information about the receiver voltage so if you click here then you can see the voltages well i have to unlock the device initially okay you have to hold here for two seconds Yes, the device has been unlocked. You can see the alarm that would be triggered for the transmitter and the receiver battery voltages. Over here, you can see the current transmitter voltage, which is 4.7 volt. And uh, over here, I, I've already shown you this, this page corresponds uh, to which stick or which uh, module is connected to which channel, assigned to which channel, I should say more specifically. So, so the first thing uh, you gotta do is you have to bind your device with your uh, with, with the receiver. So in order to do so, you have to get the binding plug that will that comes with the device inside the pack. So you get the binding plug and you connect the binding plug in this port, which is mentioned as BVCC. I believe it's quite clear. So you have to connect the binding plug to the VCC port and then go to the setting option. Uh, then as setting then system. And then you have to click on receiver bind and it will bind the receiver automatically in my case it's already binded so i'm not going to show that uh, once again so this is the first thing that you have to do and the other thing you know to reduce the battery consumption is uh, to reduce the brightness so how you can reduce the brightness you go to system you go to system you uh, you can change the change the screen lock system you go to brightness and you change the sound intensity and the brightness from here that will eventually give you um, a greater uh, battery time so you can reset the uh, settings you can upgrade the farmers you see the options over here so these are the initial settings then uh, what you have to do is uh, well let me check uh, you, uh, you have to check your multiple options which options you mainly need so let me start from the beginning the first option is the channel reverse option so when you need the channel reverse option suppose after uh, constructing the entire drone you are finding out that if you're getting the roll on the right the vehicle is moving left and if you get your roll on the left your vehicle is moving right so in that case you have to reverse the channel in that case you have to reverse the channel in my case let me show you in my case channel 2 is reversed because i found such kind of anomaly so i had to reverse channel 2 so that's the channel uh, uh, channel reversing uh, maneuver and uh, one of the reasons you need to um, uh, reverse your channel then the thing that i'm going to show you is the channel mixing option normally to these switches three-way or two-way switches the flight modes are assigned normally in a three-way switch you can assign at most three flight modes but it happens that at a time you may uh, 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 you may need multiple flight modes so in order to work with at most like uh, with around six flight modes you have to mix channel 5 and channel 6 say this is channel 5 say this is channel 6 even though i'm not sure no this one is channel 6 and this one is channel 5 so what we have to do is mix these two channels this one will be the master channel this one will be the slave channel so under one position master one position you get three positions of the slave under master two position you get three positions of the slave so master one slave one two three master two and slave one two three so you get six options and eventually you can set six flight modes and that is the reason you need to mix your channels to assign the master and the slave channels so you go to mix now before that you have to assign the auxiliary channels 
so as i've already told you that the default channels are one two three four you have to assign channel five and six to these switches so channel five will be assigned here and channel six will be assigned here so channel five is assigned to switch c and uh, similarly from here you can change the options you can change the options well i'm not that much comfortable yet okay you can see that uh, in my case channel 6 is already assigned to switch d so that's all about assigning the auxiliary channels and then you have to mix the channels so in order to this is the first mix so the master is channel 6 and the slave is channel 5 and the negative uh, and the positive percentage as you can see are respectively 80 percent and 80 percent once you are done with this you have to adjust the end position of the channels from here you see end positions okay and as you can see that the end position of channel 5 and 6 are not the same for channel 5 it is 60 percent and 50 percent and for channel 6 both of these fields are 100 percent so after uh, being uh, through this process you are all done uh, about mixing up these uh, two channels this one is channel 5 and this one is channel 6 so once you are done with mixing the two channels you can assign six flight modes to these six uh, switch positions so that's all about a very short brief of my radio transmitter hope you enjoyed it hope it will come to your work so that's all for now stay tuned for the next one bye for now